Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the comms prepper with a video about voltage standing wave ratio. What is voltage standing wave ratio? Well, voltage standing wave ratio is a measurement of the power that you send from your transmitting equipment to your antenna and how much of that power is actually coming back to the radio. And Why is this important to us as preppers? Well, if you own communications equipment, more specifically transmitters, and you're transmitting power out to antennas that you buy or make yourself, you want to make sure that those antennas are properly tuned for your operating frequency and that they're not causing any damage to your radio equipment. Because if they're not properly tuned or there's a problem with your coax, then the power you're sending to the antenna is actually being reflected back to the radio, and that reflected power can cause damage to our transmitting equipment. So, in this slide here, again, you transmit from your radio, the power goes down the coax out to the antenna. And if the antenna is a good match, then it radiates off the antenna into free space and you have communications. However, if there's a problem with the coax or the antenna, some of that power is reflected back to the radio. And this reflected power can damage our transmitters because it can heat up our tubes, our transistors, and our finals. Or in more modern radios, the radio will actually start turning its power off to protect itself. So when you think you're transmitting full power, you're not. The analogy I like to use is a drop of water landing in a puddle. And where that drop of water impacts is actually where your transmitter is actually transmitting out through to the coax out to the antenna. And if everything works good, the radio waves leave your transistor or your tubes in your transmitter and go down to your coax out to your antenna and radiate out in a free space. And if everything's good, they keep going. However, if there's a problem, those waves ripple out and in the instance of a, of a puddle, hit the edge or the shoreline and bounce back into the radio and cause heat. So when we make our antenna systems, our coax and our antennas and do our installations, we want to make sure that all the power we're sending out to the antenna makes it to the antenna and gets radiated. And none of that power, or as little as possible, comes back into the transmitter. Here are some screenshots from uh, some typical radio manuals. Up in the top, it clearly states, if the SWR ratio exceeds 2 to 1, it may damage your transmitter. This is why it's important to us as preppers to make sure if we have transmitters, we're checking or SWR of our coax and antenna systems. Also, as I said earlier in the lower right hand corner this example, modern radios that see a high SWR or high standing wave ratio will actually start to turn their power back automatically to protect the final transistors or the tubes. So you may think you're putting out 5 watts, 25 watts, or 100 watts, but if you have a bad antenna or coax and high SWR, it's going to dial that power back and you're not getting the full you're not experiencing the full capability of your equipment and you may not even know it's taking place. I'm not going to go too in depth on this formula, but I just wanted to show you what the VSWR formula is and show you how it relates to a typical modern watt meter SWR meter. So here in this slide I have a screenshot of a typical cross needle watt meter slash VSWR meter and how these numbers relate to the formula. So in this slide we have 100 watts of forward power as highlighted in yellow and that's where you would plug it into the formula. We have 20 watts of reflected power which is where it shows it plugged into the formula and then if you're ambitious and want to take the time to noodle out all the math, the SWR for what you're seeing here in this meter is 2.62 to 1 VSWR. Now the nice thing and the advantage of a dual needle, and that's the picture you're seeing here is a watt meter that has one needle for forward, one needle for reflective power, is rather than doing all this math, where the needles cross is actually the SWR, what you should be looking for. So on this slide, you can see the 100 watt needle for the forward power and the 20 watt needle for the reflected power cross just about at 2.62. So the SWR is kind of calculated out for you automatically. Where the needles cross, that's where your SWR is. You go back and check the 
specifications for your radio. And if your radio says the antenna should be two to one or better, meaning less, then this would be an indication that you have a problem because the SWR for this antenna system that I'm emulating here is above two to one, indicating there's a problem. And you'd want to look at that. You'd want to make sure the antenna was properly tuned or you didn't have a bad piece of coax or something else that could be causing this problem. So this would be an indication that there's a problem with your system. So how do you check your SWR? What do you need to do this? Well, there's many makes and models out there, but a, a generic cross needle watt meter is not a bad thing to have. So you come out of your radio with the coax into the watt meter and there's a port on the back that says transmitter. And then there's another port that says antenna. And every time you transmit, both needles will move. The forward power will show what's going to the antenna and the reflected power will show you what's coming back. So I've highlighted here in yellow, you can see that forward power is gonna be on the left-hand side when you're transmitting. And at the same time, the other needle is gonna come up and show you reflected power. And where those needles cross is your SWR. And typically you wanna be at the two or below level with as little reflected power as possible. If you don't have a cross needle or you don't want one, uh, there's also other types of watt meters out here. This watt meter here is probably the best watt meter you can buy. And it's the oldest. It's been out there forever, but very dependable. It's a Bird 43 watt meter. But unlike the cross needle, there's only one needle in this watt meter. So this can only measure power in one direction at a time. And how it does this is, I zoomed in a little bit here, is they have these plug-in elements or that you see here and these elements are power specific and frequency specific and they're removable so you can buy different elements for different frequencies and different power but you plug this element in and there's an arrow printed on it pointing in a direction either at the antenna or at the radio and you can actually grab this element and twist it 180 degrees clockwise or counterclockwise it rotates in the socket so what you're seeing here is it's pointing at the antenna. So it's measuring power right now being sent to the antenna. The radio waves are coming up out of the radio into the watt meter, flowing through the element in the direction of the arrow up to the antenna. So when you're transmitting and the needle moves and the arrow is pointed at the antenna, you're measuring forward power. And you'd write this down in a piece of paper. Now to check your reflected power, literally grab the element and twist it in the socket 180 degrees so the arrows pointing at the radio and now when you transmit and the needle moves on the meter it's measuring all the radio waves that are being bounced back from the antenna to the transmitter and that would be your reflected power so now you and you write that down in a piece of paper so now you know what your forward power is and your reflected power is you can go to one of these charts as I show you here on this slide rather than doing all the four formula work yourself, they have these charts out there that you can download. And in this example, we have 100 watts forward power highlighted in yellow, and then 20 watts reflected power highlighted in red. And where that crosses, the diagonal lines represent the SWR measurement. So in this case, we're putting 100 watts out, 20 watts back. It's crossing just a little bit above the 2.5 to 1 SWR diagonal line. So the SWR is above 2.5 to 1, which again would indicate that there's a problem because we want to be below 2 to 1. So at 100 watts, if you're looking at the scale, following it across, at a minimum, you really shouldn't have more than 2 watts coming back to get down below 2 to 1. So this SWR is way too high. So I'm going to pause here from the PowerPoint portion of this and roll into the video demonstration portions of this video. Hello everybody and welcome to the demonstration portion of the video. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate VSWR with my MFJ883 VSWR meter uh, using my Gaysu FT60 dual band handheld radio. And I have a couple of demonstration antennas here. We're first going to start off with a 50 ohm dummy load representing a perfect antenna 
and this unit here will absorb all the power coming out of the radio so there should be no reflected power back and then I have a mobile antenna here that will demonstrate on a mag mount and then we'll go ahead and we'll try seeing what the SWR is on a frequency or two for the rubber antenna that actually came with the radio. So let me pause here and set up the dummy load. Okay everybody, I'm back. I've connected the dummy load to the back of the BSWR meter to the antenna port. And then the coax comes around to the handheld radio. So I'll set this up here so you can see it. And I'm going to go ahead and transmit with the handheld radio and you'll see the needle move. And there you go. So you have a little bit of reflective power coming back. Not much and that could probably be coming from all my connectors if they're loose. But you have four watts of forward power and that's correct for this radio. It's a four watt handheld in the UHF mode, five watt in the VHF mode and we're putting out full power down to the antenna with very little coming back and that's a good match that's a good antenna and it should be because it's a dummy load so let me switch to the whip antenna okay now we're back with the uh, whip antenna here and it's connected to the watt meter so I'm going to go ahead and transmit here so you can actually see what its SWR is this is Romeo 3 Charlie uniform Check testing one two three four five five four three two one R three C U testing. So as you see, the characteristics of that whip antenna were pretty much uh, the same as the the dummy load. It was a, a good match. The antenna is properly cut. We're getting maximum power down to the antenna and very little coming back. And that's what we want to see. That's uh, that's the objective of getting an antenna cut for the right frequency. So let me show you that again. This is R3CU testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. R3CU testing out. So that's a good match. And as you can see, I'm not tricking you. Here's the coax. It comes up. And I'm pulling it and the antenna's moving. So it, uh, it works pretty good. So let me pause here and put the rubber antenna on. Okay, so we're back. And I have the rubber duck antenna hooked up there. So we'll spin that watt meter around. Let me get the coax out of the way. And uh, we're going to go ahead and transmit and see what this SWR looks like. Romeo 3 Charlie Uniform, testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This is R3CU radio check. Now as you can see there is we have a lot more reflective power and the SWR has gone up. So take a look again. R3CU testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the SWR went well above 2 to 1 where the needles were crossing, but you're still getting out a little more than 4 watts and uh, you get 1 watt reflected. So that's not too bad. R3CU testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, uh, I'm back here with the radio program for the VHF band and you can see the difference here uh, when you have dual band radios. R3CU radio check 12345-54321. Now as you can see where those needles crossed, it's well above 3 to 1, so far above that it looks like the radio is actually cutting back its power to protect its amplifier. So where the antenna, the rubber antenna performed well up at the UHF band, as we got down to the bottom half of the VHF band, the characteristics of the antenna changed and its performance didn't match what we would like to see. So I'll show you this again. Romeo 3 Charlie Uniform radio check 12345-54321 R3CU out. So there you have it. You can see at the low end very high VSWR. You can see where the needles cross, what the forward power is and what the reflective power is. So I hope this uh, video has been helpful to give you some ideas uh, on how you can look at your antenna systems and how to check it. And as always, uh, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Comms Prepper.